is going on and welcome to another video. This is Angus and um, yeah, obviously you clicked on this video because I'm sure you are interested in understanding or having basically explained to you the best macronutrient spread for fat loss. Now, um, with this video what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be breaking down a few different scenarios for both a female scenario and a male scenario so that way no one gets left out unless of course you're in between and you're part of the squad that is how dare you assume my gender. Well then, I'll leave it up to you in terms of how you want to fit in between, okay? But um, yeah, so in this video I'm going to be breaking things down, I'm going to be using my iPad. I've already done a shitload of calculations to work all this out, so that way the video isn't super lengthy. And in that way, in terms of yourself, you can just fast forward or skim your way through in terms of which scenario best works for you. Heads up that if you're someone who is bulking at the moment or maintaining or whatever, this won't entirely apply to you. But the science behind it in terms of like some of the spreads and stuff like that are still going to be relevant to you, all right? So I'm going to fire up my iPad, we're going to jump straight in and um, yeah, it's going to be sick. So obviously if you're new to the channel, strap yourself in. If you do end up liking this video and it's of value to you, well, obviously give it some love and share it with someone who could benefit from it. And be sure to subscribe and obviously if you're a returning subscriber, hey, get pumped with some knowledge fam. Let's get stuck in. I can't keep riding in the dark. Screen recording is on, so let us fire it up, boys and girls. So you can see here we've got a pretty boss grid, right? Now what we're gonna be doing is over here on the left side, everything on the left side is going to be the context of what you'll be seeing here is a female. Whoops, hang on, got the wrong tool going on there. Uh, let's change it to an actual pencil, there we go. All right, so we'll put this away. Uh, so it's gonna be a female who weighs about 70 kgs, uh, AKA, if you work in pounds, which a lot of us do these days, that works out to be 154 pounds, right? Um, who is lightly active, so in other words, um, works like a basic office job, lifts about three to four times a week, um, with the goal being fat loss. And then everything over here on the right side is going to be, did I write female? Yeah, I did. Over here on the right side is going to be for a male who weighs 90 kgs, which is about 198 pounds. Um, in similar sort of context, this lad here is lightly active. goal being fat loss all right so over here in the top section we're going to be we're going to change colors for each of these i reckon so let's do blue so blue over here will represent um, team keto in terms of the um, macro spread all right so if you were going to be i'm mean, sorry if you were a female and you were in this context which the bulk of you probably will be Obviously, you'll adjust accordingly based on your weight and your activity factors, but if you were team keto, a spread for you would probably look something like this. You would probably have about 150 grams of protein. The reason why I've said 150 is that roughly this is just under one gram of protein per pound of um, you know, actual body weight, which I find is a decent amount to aim for if you're looking to get fairly full while aiming for whatever your calories and macronutrients are. Keep in mind that it's protein and fiber that are the biggest contributors towards things like satiation. So in other words, how satisfied and how full you feel from the meal that you've had. Um, so if you're having 150 grams of protein, this is gonna be about 600 calories. Um, and then if we just zoom out a bit here. And given that it's ketosis, obviously you're gonna stay below 50 grams or about 45 grams. So let's say for example, you would probably be on about 40 grams of carbs, right? Um, that would be about 160 calories. Then, uh, you would obviously have all the fats because hashtag keto, right? So you would be on about 138 uh, grams of fat, right? Um, in this sort of scenario, this would be about 1,240 cows. Bob's your uncle, right? So that would probably be your rough spread if you were on team keto. And then dietary guidelines in Australia, they recommend to us that per, basically per about 1,000 calories that you consume, um, you would be taking in about 15 grams of fiber. So in this case, the, um, the chick would be consuming about 30 grams of fiber because if, 
someone who is lightly active and weighs about 70 kgs as a female is looking to lose body fat, well then this would all come into 2k calories. Right? Now let's say for example that the chick right, is opting for a macronutrient spread that's basically um, what we'll call uh, high carb, low fat. Right? Nothing wrong with this spread, but if this is something you feel strikes your fancy, uh, pay attention. You would still consume 30 grams of fiber. Keep in mind that you can go over fiber targets, okay? But if you go too far over, what's probably going to happen is that you will start to feel ridiculously bloated, right? just as a heads up. Um, same deal here. It's ideal that kind of regardless, oh, so we'll talk about that in the next bottom part down here. But same sort of deal, so we've got 150 grams of protein. You'd be on about 40 grams of fat, give or take. Reason why I don't like females going much below 40 grams of fat is because keep in mind that you need fats for hormone production and a range of other things. Um, so it's like, yeah, you can go lower than that, but obviously because I'm sure that you would give a shit about your health if you're watching this video, um, it's probably not wise to go much below that. So we'll go with 40 grams of fat. Um, and then in this sort of case, you would go on about 260 grams of carbs, right? All this comes into the same 2K calories. Now, this is my personal favorite down here. And this one here represents Team Flexible, right? Now, why it's Team Flexible, right, is that you, all right, like, because to give you kind of a nutshell, like if someone is um, aiming for fat loss, right, you to a degree can aim for this amount of protein per pound that you weigh, right? Um, I'll put here weight, right? So it's like that's your 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 range to play with, okay? So team flexible, let's say for example that you're somewhere in the middle, right? Or even just working with those numbers, you would be on about 120 to 180 grams of protein, right? Um, and then obviously you would adjust based on how full you're feeling and how satiated you're feeling and where your performance and stuff is at, right? And then what would happen, right, is that carbs and fat would be question mark. Meaning you can have them literally at whatever you are and not even track them at all while just focusing on keeping that, um, fuck off, while keeping that, um, that fiber intake at 30 grams, okay? Now, reason why I personally feel that the flexible approach is the best for a female is that like, if you look at these, right, all of them equal that same 2K calories, right? Now you need to remember, or if you're unaware of this, it is the overall calorie consumption that is the biggest factor as to whether you will lose body fat or not, not whether you're team keto or team high fat, I mean, sorry, high carb, low fat, or team flexible. Like, they're kind of like based on personal preference. What will dictate whether you're gonna lose fat or not is whether you are in a calorie deficit. Now, when I say calorie deficit, don't just think like a lot of people go, oh, just, you know, um, eat less and move more. Like, you need to be careful of how less you go because if you're diving too deep into a calorie deficit, you're gonna have things like adaptive thermogenesis and your body down-regulating things to try and combat the process of that. So you soon to try and keep your intake as high as possible. So this is why in this is a scenario where I've said that the 70 kg person who's lightly active, like is aiming for 2,000 calories is because that's realistic. Right? Like that is them in a relative deficit. So in other words, 10 to 20% below how much energy their body requires to maintain their actual body weight. Um, rather than going too deep, which a lot of women do I find is that they go, oh fuck yeah, 1200 calories. Like, you know, this is gonna be magic, it's gonna be sick. And if you think about it, like if you say for example, apply that logic, um, yet you know that you love carbs and you're active and that sort of thing, well then going for this, is just gonna be absolutely dumb because, well, obviously you love carbs and because you're active, it's your body's preferred energy source. So if you're trying to live off 40 grams of carbs, right, and try and eat this high amount of fat, you're gonna be having dreams about people that have got this amount of carbs and your soul will be destroyed, um, you know, <laughs> trying to actually stick to it because we'll look at our low 
your carbs are. You see what I mean? So it's about knowing what your body responds best on, knowing how energy sources work, and then working in sync with that when it comes to choosing a macronutrient spread that works for you. So that's team female squad done. Now let's get into the males. Okay, fam. So for those of you who are tuning in now, uh, obviously if you're a female, like still probably watch this because it would be good for you to know if you've got a partner who's looking for this sort of stuff or you know, you've got someone who you can tag, who could benefit, whatever it might be. But either way, let's break down the similar sort of scenario for guys. So if a guy is basically um, in this sort of weight range and is lightly active, so in other words, lifts three times a week or so and you know, doesn't have a very demanding office job or anything like that and the goal is fat loss, then you're gonna be aiming for about 2,600 calories, okay? Give or take, like this isn't me doing balls deep calculations, it's just a rough ballpark, so about 2,600 calories, all right? What this will correlate to is about 180 grams of protein. Do the math there, that will come into about 720 calories. Uh, so 100, yeah, keep in mind that this at the top here is blue, so this is team keto we're talking about here. So in other words, um, yeah, moderate protein, um, super high fat, low carbs, obviously stay in ketosis to ketosis, so we'll go here 40 grams of carbs. That will be 160 calories dedicated to carbs. And then we will have 191 grams of glorious fat, which will come into about 17, 20 cows. So this would be the spread that you would roughly be on. Um, you can do the percentages yourself. I didn't bother working that out, but this would be the spread you would roughly be on if you were team keto um, with this at a similar weight range, okay? Now, depending on your experience in the game, it could probably be pretty hard to be able to hit protein while also hitting fat. Like if I were you, what I'd probably be doing is I'd be opting for um, like rather than say for example, going down the route that is like, fuck yeah, I'll just smash heaps of chicken and then I'll eat heaps of nut butter and shit like that to be able to hit my fats. If I were you to be able to keep food volume decent, um, you know, opt for things like steak and salmon and shit like that, which is gonna make your life a lot more interesting. But where things will get hard is that you're gonna have all these calories to aim for um, but your fiber is going to be about 45 grams. So this is where it's going to be, like it can be a bit hit and miss and a bit hard for the keto squad um, because, well, obviously like lots of vegetables and fruit and stuff like that is quite high in carbs. Um, so you're going to have to be, you know, really sort of anal and diligent about what you choose to be able to meet your carbs there, okay? So we're going into green territory now. Green territory here, just a reminder, um, this is team high carb and then low fat, right? So this is a scenario, same deal. Um, the breakdown is gonna equal 2,600 cows. Now, the spread will look something like this. Similar sort of deal, 180 grams of protein. Um, this scenario here will equal 720 cows. 180 grams of protein, um, 60 grams of fat. I find this to be a sweet spot for someone who is in this sort of spread of macros in terms of um, you know high carb, low fat. As a guy, you seem to have a decent amount of fat coming in to keep test levels good, hormones operating, that sort of stuff. But then your carbs are gonna be nice and high, and that's gonna be at 335 grams of carbs. And if I zoom in here, uh, that's gonna be 540 cows. And this here will be 13. something like this in terms of this ratio be aware that you can subset like reducing some of your carbs in favor of having higher protein or you can reduce your protein a little bit to be able to have even more carbs all right because keep in mind that you still need to have that 0.8 to 1.2 grams of protein per pound that you weigh um, because obviously we want to make sure that regardless of your macronutrient spread that you're getting in sufficient protein to make sure that you're getting in those essential amino acids and uh, obviously protein synthesis can take effect because your biggest goal is gonna be muscle preservation, right? Um, now for team flexible, what this will look like is the same sort of deal, 2,600 cows, right? Um, 45 grams of fiber. 
uh, that 100 and, oh well in this sort of case no, it's going to be 150 in terms of the lowest the protein should go, right, all the way up to 240 grams of protein. And why this is flexible is obviously because you would find whether the 0.8 grams per pound range works best for you all the way up to 1.2 grams and you can't even go higher than that. I've worked with some people where we just went, yeah, like up to 1.5 grams, um, you yeah, know, and that was pretty crazy, but I got the job done. Um, and then obviously carbs would be, and then fat would be. Now, as you can see, the common occurring pattern here, right? We're gonna use a different color altogether for this, right? So let's use this one. So for the chicks here, right, you can see, same sort of deal. 2,000 calories, 2,000 calories, 2,000 calories, all right? So in the scenario, regardless of what spread of macronutrients is consumed, provided that there's sufficient protein and those calories are met, this female will lose body fat, provided that they're healthy, they manage stress, and that they sleep well, all right? Over here in the guy's point of view, because that same 2,600 is evident across the board, regardless of what camp old mate decides to bat for, he will lose body fat, you see what I mean? So the moral of the story here is that there's not really a perfect macronutrient spread for fat loss. It's all subjective in terms of what you feel that you thrive best on, because any calculator is going to pump out, you know, various macros um, based on preferences that you select, whether it be keto, high fat, whatever. But then what I personally find is that because humans and restriction don't do well, and because there's that much variety in our life and that sort of thing, it becomes harder and harder to stick to any individual one. So what I personally do whenever I'm working with someone is I will usually opt for Team Flexible. And the reason for that is because it's exactly that, flexible. The least amount of restriction possible that we can have while getting someone used to aiming for a certain amount of food, calories, and overall volume and whatever coming in. If we can get consistent with that while getting in a consistent amount of fiber, so in other words, getting in enough plants, right? That's the main baselines covered. And then as they go along in the journey, this is where we can kind of find whether they thrive best on more carbs, lower fat, or whether they thrive best on, you know, more fats, but a lesser amount of carbs, you see what I mean? So if I were you, don't stress about, um, you know, the perfect spread for you, um, like, because it doesn't exist, as I said, right? I've even found that in my own journey is that, like, I, my mood for different food changes all the time. Like, sometimes I'm keen for just warm, hefty, hearty meals. Sometimes I'm more keen for just light, um, you know, salads and meats and just light stuff. And then, you know, sometimes I'm keen for just like slabs of Nutella on bread. Other times I'm keen for a fruit salad with some yogurt. You see what I mean? So naturally, if you can learn to work with the cravings of your body and learn how to make thermodynamics work for you, well then you'll be able to kill it ongoing. And that's what this is about. This is about crafting a relationship with food and having that education to go with it that will allow you to control how you look and feel ongoing. So if this was insightful and valuable for you, do me a favor, like it, share it with someone, or comment below, or tag someone, um, you know, who you think could benefit from watching it. Um, if you're a returning subscriber, obviously give it some love and let me know what you found valuable. If you're new to the channel, definitely suggest that you, you know, yeah, stick around, go check out the upload section, check out some more of my shit, check out some of my eating videos and stuff like that, or other content videos, or you can check out some of the playlists. Um, heaps of cool stuff to check out. And if you weren't aware, um, I thrive on coaching people with this stuff so I can take the guesswork away from them. Because what I've found is that with my approach, it allows me to be able to just teach you how to eat properly. And by that I mean like just learning how to make food work for them without restriction, without rules. And so that way they can just uh, have clarity and enjoy the game. And that way it allows us to be able to manipulate and automate their progress and make things so much more fun and remove all the, all the guesswork, the confusion, all this sort of shit. So if you're keen to check out some more of that in terms of what I do on that angle, scroll below and check out the description. You'll see a few links you can check out. Same with my social media. I'd love to have you follow me and share a bit of my journey and get some more free value um, because, yeah, why not? Right? YouTube's sick, but I'm more active on there in the day-to-day. -day. But either way, thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you next time in the YouTube world.